GPUs and smartphones are actually very similar nowadays. The new iPhone being re-released every year is basically a household meme. It's the same phone as last year with USB, I don't know, better cameras, that's kind of it. There's almost no point in upgrading your phone every single generation. Well, unless you want some cracked glass. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I did not see that one coming. But if you go from an iPhone 10, for example, all the way to an iPhone 15, then that's a really big deal. And I know this because my mom just did it recently and she's really happy. So it was interesting to see when I asked you guys about upgrading your GPUs, how long it would take. And most of y'all said about three generations of graphics cards until an upgrade. And that translates to about seven years or even more. And in recent years, we've seen NVIDIA, the world's leader in graphics cards, saying this. Moore's Law is probably currently running at about two times. I would also say, um, you know, Moore's Law is dead. What they're basically saying is it's not getting significantly cheaper to get better performance out of our graphics cards chips with every single generation. A prime example of this is when Nvidia introduced real-time ray tracing in 2018. And it's been praised for how it radically changes the way that games look and how lights behave and operate almost like real life. And we've only seen this tech get better since its inception five years ago. But <laughs> ray tracing has a problem. And its problem is that nobody can use it. And it's funny to see ray tracing as one of Nvidia's main selling points for their graphics cards to try to get you to upgrade, yet their mainstream cards like the RTX 2060 that was introduced back in 2018 could not do ray tracing, that thing was a joke. And even in 2023, with the release of an RTX 4060, it still can't do ray tracing. It's like unless you got an entire band to drop on a graphics card, Good luck using ray tracing in 2023. So five years of progress with RT has landed us here. But with an optimistic view about this, you would think that the performance that you need to use it right now would eventually come down to mainstream GPUs in the future. But the real question is, how long is it going to take for mainstream cards to achieve that level of performance? Because the last time that we saw GPUs make a significant leap in our price to performance was back in 2016. 1060 may just be the new mass consumer workhorse card that replaces the 970 in terms of Steam survey crushing sales. And there is still tons of GTX 1060s and 1070s flooding around the market. And the GTX 1080 Ti has been called one of Nvidia's greatest mistakes that they ever launched because it was just too damn good. But now we're in a position where the progress with graphics hardware is slowing down, but games are asking for more demands than they ever have before with the latest technology. And it even makes us less enticing to upgrade our graphics cards because the upgrade feels almost pointless. To me, this basically leaves the industry to be able to go in like two ways. It's either we can make ways for our GPUs to basically ignore the crazy demands that games are having, or we can just say, screw it. I mean, games don't need to be demanded. Let's just forget all about the crazy features. And what we're seeing is basically both of those options taking place right now. DLSS and FSR technologies use upscaling, frame generation, and even improved ways of denoising ray tracing to make games in total easier to run. All of these features can also be used to extend the lifespan of older graphics cards which means also that you'd be upgrading your graphics card less. But all of these technologies obviously have their own downsides. Okay, upscaling, for example, can have bad visual artifacts like shimmering, ghosting, and just overall softness. Your game just doesn't look as sharp as it would at native. Frame generation too adds latency to the game which if it's too bad of latency, it basically could make it unplayable and almost nauseating. Plus frame generation can have its own visual artifacts. Although I would like to say, it's usually not as bad as the ones that are associated with upscaling. As well, ray reconstruction, which replaces denoisers within games for ray tracing, can have a fatal downfall because it requires you to use the most demanding version of ray tracing called RT Overdrive. 95% of hardware 
can't use RT Overdrive whatsoever at basically any resolution. And it really starts to get you thinking. We're using all of these technologies just to try to bypass the way that games are so freaking demanding nowadays. Why even bother investing in these things? And that's where we can see the flip side of this picture. We could just forget about ray tracing. We just forget about Nanite and Lumen and simply use the traditional way of rendering games that has advanced so much over the years. And this technique of rendering games is called rasterization. Rasterization is basically a combination of a bunch of different rendering tricks and optimizations, basically to simulate what RT ray tracing actually looks like. And we can see this in a game like Cyberpunk, which can go from being the most advanced ray tracing we've ever seen in any game ever, to being able to just turn all that off and just go back to utilizing the traditional rasterization techniques, which still look very impressive in this game. And at the same time, we can get a lot more performance while we're doing it. Fortnite is in a similar situation, but it's built in Unreal Engine 5, which means it has access to extremely demanding features like Nanite and Lumen. And most people don't use Nanite and Lumen in Fortnite because Honestly, the rasterization within the game still looks really good, really beautiful to this day, and you get a ton more FPS using rasterization. Just the raw performance of rasterization in games can make it the clear option to most people a lot of the time. Doubling that, it still looks really good, and because of those visuals, it can almost nullify the benefits of using RT in general. And some people even say that they prefer rasterization over ray tracing. And I don't really agree with these people, but just the fact that the visual benefits of ray tracing is debatable really says a lot to the validity of ray tracing as a whole. Not to mention, rasterization as a technology has been starting to hit a point of diminishing returns. You know, we could throw more GPU horsepower at it, but it doesn't seem to be super worth it because games are looking about as good with rasterization as they'd ever need to look. Maybe they could look a little bit better, but I don't think that's entirely necessary. And this means that we're seeing rasterization in games that isn't that difficult to run a lot of the time. With the insane level of experience that has gone to rasterized rendering techniques within games, it explains why most games are not releasing with only ray tracing available in them, or only nanite and lumen available in them. Because ones that do, are harshly criticized because they rely on aggressive upscaling or even like frame generation technologies to get, you know, decent levels of performance. As a whole, we're just not there yet. We're not there to push the technology to this point in time. When will we be there? And that brings us back to this. Rasterization technology is so advanced and so accessible to so many GPUs out there. Plus the fact that upscaling and even frame generation now with FSR 3 is now extending the lifespan of our graphics cards. Many of us just aren't upgrading our graphics cards nearly as frequently nowadays. And it's just like the smartphone market. Like, have you noticed how goddamn expensive smartphones are just in the past few years? Especially with phones, how much they nickel and dime you just to add a little bit of storage to it. It's ridiculous. And that's because people aren't upgrading their smartphones nearly as frequently. And the smartphone makers know this. They've adjusted their margins on their products and policies to account for this. Like, even look, Google, the eternal thrower away of products, is actually guaranteeing six years of software updates to their newest Google Pixel phones because Google is preparing for longer upgrade cycles on the market. So what have we been seeing with the GPUs? A lot of people have been complaining about how expensive GPUs are nowadays, and honestly, rightfully so. I mean, seven years ago, a GTX 1070 was $380, and now its supposed uh, successor in 2023, the RTX 4070, has a $600 MSRP. Even though the 4070's price is starting to come down, uh, th that definitely isn't only due to inflation. NVIDIA, AMD, they know that people are upgrading GPUs less frequently 
and they have been adjusting their prices in order to account for this. Plus, uh, I don't know if many people are thinking about this, but because people are upgrading less frequently, this also means that Nvidia and AMD need to provide software updates longer than they ever have before. At the same time, they need to be able to invest some of that research and development to make technologies like DLSS and FSR that many of us use on a daily basis and rely on. What's interesting about GPUs too is it's a one-time purchase. This means that there's no subscriptions, no ongoing fees that support the long-term development over the years. Even smartphones, generally speaking, have some kind of subscription model to get extra storage on the cloud, or they sell accessories for their products that are certified, and the makers of the smartphones get a cut of that product. So that means that all the ongoing development for GPUs have to rely on that initial purchase. That means our GPU prices go way up. And honestly, I'm not going to sit here and like defend the companies like Sometimes these cards are way too expensive and I completely agree with it. Everybody is justified in their feelings here because it sucks to see cards that used to be affordable become not affordable in the future. But we also can't have our cake and eat it too. We can't expect to get unlimited software updates into the future and then also pay nothing for these software updates. It doesn't make any sense as a company, as a business, or even as a consumer, understandably. And this all stems back to the fact that Nvidia and AMD have seen that the progress in generation on generations of GPUs has been slowing down. These companies aren't thinking one year in advance, they're thinking decades at a time. But it's not all downsides and frustrations, at the very least, you won't have to upgrade your GPU nearly as frequently because as we've been talking about in this video, rasterization technology for rendering games is getting so freaking advanced and it looks great and it's not absolutely insane to run for a lot of graphics cards. Like here, I have an $180 ARC A580 running one of the most demanding rasterized games out there, which is Cyberpunk, and it's running at pretty com comfortable FPS. So if you're happy with your performance right now, depending on what you play, most likely that performance will still be achievable with that graphics card into the future. Now I can't guarantee that. You might just have to lower a few settings in games, which when you think about it, if it's a future game and then you're lowering some settings, you're basically just bringing it back to the visuals of when you got the graphics card in the first place. Now on top of that, in the future, you can take advantages of these technologies like FSR and DLSS that attack the problem in a little bit of a smarter way and use these to basically extend the lifespan of your graphics card into the future. And if you're really smart, then you can use both of these techniques together and your, your graphics card will never die out. That's, that's probably a lie. Let me know what you guys think about this topic in the comments below. And if I missed anything, are these points justified of why we've seen graphics cards go up so much in price, but also the fact that, you know, there's not that much generation, generationally going on. And most people are holding onto their graphics cards longer than ever before. Like and sub the video if you enjoyed um, or dislike it if you didn't, um, but hopefully we'll see more likes and dislikes. All right. Anyways, uh, that's all that's been about it for me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.